Mark Rotenberg, I think an argument can be made that in this new world of digital information and the possibilities of vast powers of data collection has gone much further in the commercial realm than the governmental one. Why are people on this side of the house arguing so much more strenuously about government action and government actors in this regard than they are in the commercial side? Well, I think we're concerned about the misuse of personal information by the private sector and uh, among uh, privacy leaders, it's critical to ensure that there are legal safeguards uh, to protect consumers, that their financial information, uh, their medical information, the activities of their email and online uh, is protected. I don't think there's any real dispute about that. Um, but I think the great concern about the activities of government uh, have to do with the extent to which there is surveillance in the criminal context, in the intelligence gathering context that is directed toward the American public. That is something that we thought had been resolved through our laws and through the work of the church committee, that that type of suspi uh, suspicionless surveillance, not individualized, not based on any activity, but the open, you know, dragnet fishing type of data capture, that would not happen anymore in this country. But because it has emerged, I think that's what has made it a priority. Do you train so much more of your fire on the government than on the commercial realm because so much of that commercial information that's being gathered is in fact surrendered voluntarily by individual citizens and consumers? Well, well I have to say, Ray, knowing some of the current campaigns we have against large companies, they would smile thinking that you believe we're not training much fire on them uh, because they have a very different view, of course, uh, of what's actually taking place. The American public is very concerned, of course, about the collection and use of their personal information. Uh, but I think the question that you've asked us to answer tonight uh, really speaks to the conduct of government, really speaks to the treatment of people who board airplanes, who attempt to enter office buildings, who walk down city streets, who may be asked for identity cards. Uh, we are beginning to put in place new rules and practices where, which are actually quite foreign to our country. Uh, as you know, my colleague mentioned these were the experiences of, of uh, you know, Eastern European countries that looked at the telephone system and said, here is an opportunity to try to understand what our political opponents may be planning. Here is an opportunity to see who the authors and the writers are that may be against us. We rejected that in this country, and I think that's what we want to ensure doesn't come to pass. You know, I. Uh, uh, I think a couple of things are assumed here that need to be challenged. One is a premise that there's been widespread abuse of authority. There has been some mistakes in the context of the administration of national security letters, administrative subpoenas that are used to gather information. But on the legal issue of what authority is available, it seems to me that if you took a case to the Supreme Court and litigated the president's position, that the language used by Justice Powell that originally suggested that national security was to be treated differently than the normal criminal process, because of course the interests are entirely different. And I think that has to be understood as a first premise. In the criminal process, we've got a crime. We've got an individual. And we've got a warrant to go out and get the evidence to prove that crime and to to deprive that individual of his liberty if, in fact, it is proven beyond a reasonable doubt that he engaged in that socially unacceptable behavior. In the context of terrorism, the enemy is indeed quite more formidable than the Soviet Union because it is not identified with a given territory, because indeed its ide ideology is constantly shifting and quite difficult to understand and quite oppressive and fanatical and in many ways uh, foreign to the United States grasp. And by virtue of that, one needs to gather the information first in order to safeguard the, the, the community. And that can be done. The key, can be d the key to our grasping the protection of privacy and security at the same time is to prevent 
the misuse of the retention and dissemination of this information, not by a judicial body, but taking a page from our European friends, an independent review agency that would consist of a member of the court, a member of the legislature, but also would consist of technologically able people who know how to calibrate the technology to minimize the potential abuse.